Right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for October 8th, 2023. Starting with the 30 minute hybrid swing, beginning with Alcoa. As always, the yellow box is today's price action. The blue shaded box is the five day look back period. Um, so we got a, uh, a sell off. This was kind of you know lower lows, so the downward slide is still in effect. So that makes this an SSC. A front run that a little bit. This is coming into the spring. A one two three entry as it crosses the dragon. I take the risk. Standard risk. Plus one. Hitting singles, just trying to make contact. Uh, I mean, I trade with the same calmness and confidence of a rat trying to escape with a piece of cheese in an alley that's filled with hungry cats. That's how calm I am when I'm trading. Uh, AI. Uh, so this rolled over. This is in a series of uh, like kata twos to the downside so that rolls over hits the winter take the short on the owl entry it sells off and then take a one two three exit at the edge of the uh, edge of the dragon for about 0.5 amazon uh, no trade Caterpillar, no trade. Cliff, um, nice trade. Here's here's yesterday's close. There's the level for the collapsing dragon. It gaps down to here and uh, sells off in the second bar. Take the short standard risk. Sells off hard. There's the turning point. So as it comes up, I hit the edge of the dragon, dragon exit for about just under 2R, maybe 1.5. So when I'm in the money on that one, this thing runs up and runs back down. The, the RL10 hasn't flinched yet, so that doesn't shake me out. Hey, but what if it shakes you out, Ken? Well, then you get an exit for 1R, and then you re-enter here, and then you're a little more aggressive on this exit, and you probably exit there instead of there. So you get your 2R that way. CVS. So the, yesterday's trade that I was leery of, and which then developed into a nice trade that closed here, that was like plus two in hand, so we decided to keep it. That thing just continued to collapse. And here, I treat that as a collapsing drag in second position. That thing does nothing but collapse all day in as straight a line as you want at the low of the day. And it's under key support. So that makes this the next support level. So I'm looking for... 6750 that would give it one two three days down so i'm really hoping to exploit weakness on cvs tomorrow so that would be my number one target for tomorrow that would be my indication to pile on as soon as it starts to fail that's going to be the signal that's how you know that's the sign that's the indicator see if there's any other ways i can say that Disney uh, tried the cut the emerging dragon as it crossed above the Bollinger Band mean and uh, settled for a one-hour loss. Dish, uh, no trade today. That is as tight a sideways quiet channel after that extraordinary crushing move to the downside as you could want. So that's good. and there there's some signs of uh, upward movement tomorrow. So that's going to be in play. 
So that's going to be a priority of mine tomorrow. It's on my short list to prepare. I will be ready to trade it tomorrow. It's on my short list. I'll be watching it. I will have alerts set. I'll be ready. Uh, EA, no trade, emerging markets. Uh, collapsing dragon short, basically scratched when it did not collapse. Uh, so, uh, Dan will ask, well, is it worth taking then? Well, you can't even ask that question here. You can't ask that question here. Was it worth taking back when I didn't know what it was going to do? You, you can't ask that question. Of course it was worth taking. It met all the requirements for a reasonable trade on a collapsing dragon on something that showed two days of weakness and it just didn't collapse. There's nothing that uh, you could know about that ahead of time. So it's a pure probability. So yeah, it was worth it. It cost me nothing to enter the trade and there's a, that probably covered the cost of commissions and whatnot. Uh, if it met the entry criteria, then it's worth taking because it's part of a system that's positive expectancy. All right. Uh, this one is um, Ethereum. So we closed the trade from yesterday that we held because it started to collapse and gap down. So we banked one. And then it sold off a little bit. Then I re-entered. And I felt slick because I was getting a slightly better entry on the position than the exit. So I get to buy it back just a little bit cheaper. Uh, and then smugly watched it come all the way back and basically scratch. And then missed the second leg up. So eliminating the smugness. Here's a, um, uh, this is a pocket entry. This is front running that collapsing dragon. If you were to get a micrometer out there, and measure that yeah it's it's that much front running the collapsing dragon but it has rolled over the r10 so that makes this a kata too because it's got lower highs and the river has rolled over the dragon sloping down so in another three cents that's a collapsing dragon so it's a kata two uh, and then it closes here so that's holding plus one I like the weakness in that one, so we're going to hold that because the next significant support level is way over here. So there's another move to here that's available. So if it breaks below 58.35, then I'm going to add more. Brazil. Um, Got the continuation short as it crosses the um, Bollinger Band mean here. Standard risk to the top of the dragon. Um, probably in another, on a better day, maybe I take that exit like here at the dragon. Um, but this has been so good and this is so complacent that I felt like maybe there could be a little... Uh, shenanigans tomorrow and I decided to let it let it develop it stayed below the PSAR did not break through the dragon uh, I'll be ready to protect that small open gain tomorrow but I'd really like to see this gap down and collapse that would be nice Intel um, This is a, uh, we exited the, the um, emerging dragon from yesterday that we held overnight. It did not follow through, so we captured, we retained one. Then when it fell through the bottom here, uh, I added the short position here. The standard risk and then basically, you know, a quarter of an hour. Gave back a lot from that kind of a surprise move. But because the R10 hadn't rolled over yet, then I'm still holding it through there. 
uh, international paper, standard collapsing dragon for an R, uh, real estate, no trade, Coke, standard uh, Cata 2 for 1R, real estate, or uh, regional banks, pardon me, holding 2R and uh, holding that overnight because the uh, the nearest support level is way down there at 40.50. Uh, Mattel, standard collapsing dragon for half an R. McDonald's, standard collap oops, standard collapsing dragon entry. Here, and holding that one for with about half an R in hand. Merck, yeah. So I'm anticipating weakness uh, tomorrow. Uh, Microsoft uh, entered the Cata two. It really didn't go anywhere, but uh, that's my bet on the long side. I needed something to counteract the shorts that you just saw. Marijuana. Uh, this was a gap up, and it exploded all the way up to 640, then started to sell off, and I kept half. And then I missed the afternoon, or the late morning sell off, and then the afternoon recovery. I was happy to get an R out of that roller coaster ride. NVIDIA. Uh, I just held my nose and couldn't take it any longer. Took the Emerging Dragon. It's holding half an R. Um, I like the tech for the long side. Uh, half an R in PBW on Collapsing Dragon. Rivian. Um, this one was the speculative Cata 2 that we entered yesterday and that closed here. And then it gapped all the way up here and then started selling off and just exited here for about 3R and did not have the presence of mind to take the short for 5R all the way down to here. Um, I finally came to my senses on on this entry. I'm uh, I'm thinking that may, whatever buying pressure was causing this may be interested in this again. So I and it, um, I, I ventured this, and when it closed pretty well, uh, I am still actually positive on that one. Um, there was obviously some large buying interest on it, so there may be some more. So we'll see. Uh, the S&P has been, uh, it was basically a sideways move today, sold off and then recovered. Treasuries have finally got into that after that long run up. I said, why am I not trading it? So I tried an intraday. I'm not very successful on these holding it overnight because of the large gaps that you often see in TLT. But this was an emerging dragon entry and it gave us a nice and tidy 1R before exiting, before the close, Tesla uh, entered the Cata 2, holding about 2R on it, and then U.S. Steel, uh, no trade. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dan, your question on the context of trades later in the day, if you have time, will, pattern, and money, and you take the trade, then it's worth taking. As a, there was time during the day for those trades to unfold. They just didn't, and, uh, and you exited them without further risk. So it's nothing ventured, nothing gained. The cost of buying the lottery ticket is trivial compared to the payoff. So yes, they're worth it. The actual specific result of one trade does not give any information about the quality of the particular entry. But a thousand trades do about the category of entries because it gives you a performance profile of that particular strategy. So when you have a positive expectancy system, you get paid to take the entry if there's if you have time, will, pattern, and money because you don't know which one is the one that works ahead of time. They all look the same leaving the station. Some of them don't go anywhere. All right, let's go to the some good welding right there. Trying to beat the drum to get some uh, some good ratings on our book. Help a brother out. <laughs> All right, here's the uh, sniper trade of the day. Three minutes.
Um, <clears throat> so we're looking at a uh, it's overbought, so we know on the WMB3, we know that the W is in because it's overbought, or I'm sorry, oversold, excuse me. I mean, it was oversold throughout this entire region, but uh, it never, it never got an uptick. Um, and even the one place where it had a slight uptick, uh, it didn't break out higher. And then the next leg of selling came in. So you never get an entry in here because it never takes out the previous high, the high of the previous bar. So it just gets back into oversold. And the MACD is now starting to slope down. So you just keep stalking it to the right. Uh, there's no uptick, no uptick, uh, no uptick. Ah, there's an uptick. So we see the uptick. That means when this bar closes here, and that bar prints, now we have an uptick, so we now can read up, and now we install an entry above the high of that, of that candle, which is here. So that's where we place, in this next bar that's over here, you know, starting off in this bar, it has to get above that to be long. So you can see that this is front running the PSAR dots, which are still up here. If I use the PSAR dot minus one, then that means I have to have, I got to be prepared to enter here in case this next bar just goes shooting north. That's if I didn't have this one on. So if I was doing the, you know, the price above the PSAR minus one, I'd, I'd have my stop order to buy right there. If I was waiting for the RL10 to cross the Dragon, the RL10 is still here. It just went sideways. So there's a long way to go before that, you know, the PSR and the RL10 hit. That's probably three to four bars into the future. So the WMB3 entry usually front runs the SSC. Sometimes it gives you a one, two, three, like this is a low, that's a higher low, that makes this bar one, that's bar two. So if this bar here opens, you know, where it closed and then takes out the high without making a new low, then that's bar three and that would be our entry. So this is just another way to start stalking and fine tuning that moment of entry. This comes from the advanced day trading course. So our entry is here. Now where would I put my execution risk? Well here's the bottom of the RL10 so I would put it right there because if this bar goes up then the RL10 will probably roll up and then that makes this the pivot point of the RL10 right there and then when the PSAR does flip, it will flip at that same price level. So the price that tells me that the long side trade is not working would be an entry here and then the price falls through the belly of the RL10, which is going to be right there. So that means I'm not going to exit inside here because that's in the noise. I'm going to draw my risk box here. And I'm going to assign that a value of 0.2 position sizing risk. So that this is a, even if I take that full execution loss, it's still only a 0.2 in terms of position sizing. So I'm not nervous if price fails or that. That's what happens in the noise. So you can't get spooked by that. So I'm going to set my 
my tentative wrist box like that and be ready to go long right there. Check or hold. Bingo. We get an entry. There's my wrist box. Now these two yellow dots reflect where you might enter if you were using one of our other entry strategies. Now they look like sensible entries, don't they? Because you're getting the same price or even a better price than you got by taking the earlier risk. Yeah, and that's because those four bars went sideways and they didn't go rocketing north. If this thing went rocketing north, like it went rocketing south, you would then say, oh, man, I, I guess I should have front run in retrospect and not waited for the other entry. So that's, that's thinking after the fact. Now, this entry is where the RL10, it turns to the sp spring, and now the R10 is crossing, and that's where you get that entry on that little yellow dot. That would be the RL10 crossing the dragon or what we would call the RLXD. That's also an SSC entry. And this one is basically price going through the PSAR and, and that's really all the same entry and just where you get filled. And that's about the same entry as you get here. And it's still the same wrist bot you might have drawn it here because of the the true bottom mox nicks doesn't matter what's our upside on this one well i got to i got to be sure that there's if that is my execution risk and remember that's equal to point 2 position sizing risk so you're not nervous about taking that trade because you have protected yourself from gambling risk now what I got to check to see is is there two potential execution risks to the upside one two yeah that's just a return to the Bollinger Band mean that's an extreme abnormal move to the downside and this is just the recovery move that takes it back to the Bollinger Band mean. The reversion to the mean is the least contentious hypothesis for a trade that there ever was. That's the least unreasonable move. That when things are trucking along like this and suddenly it sells off and the reversion to the mean is this, that is the least surprising move of all. And if you can get 2R on that trade, if that's your execution risk, then, then that's fine. That is completely justified. What would be the upside intraday target on this thing if this is the working low of the day? What could we estimate as the upside re maximum reasonable intraday move to the upside? We would make it a range stat. We would go to the low of the day and add a range stat, and then that would tell us what we're not allowed to be surprised at if we saw it, because it's the maximum reasonable intraday move. So this is a justified trade. It's early in the morning, so there's enough time for this trade to unfold. I'm using the Uwe exit, so I. That means. That because that risk was so small, I'm just, I'm just leaving that little. Stop in play until I get three, PSAR dots. Above the entry. When I see the third PSAR dot. I will, jump the 
the stop to the fourth PSAR dot. That is called the U way exit strategy. Now, uh, when the PSAR dot is right here and you see this move, and it comes back to, and closes here, and now opens here, runs up, and then runs back. You say, well, I started off this trade intending to do the U-Way. And it was just grinding along in the spring. But suddenly, on this one bar, it blew up and went way north, and then has pulled back a little bit, and now I'm holding 1R. But temporarily, with the Uwe exit strategy, my stop is, is about here. That means I could actually be plus one in hand, having been plus 1.5 in hand, and end up giving back that much. So this is no longer appropriate in my view. Why? Because I have a, I had a, better than average win. So I should not let that become a below average. I certainly shouldn't make that, allow it to become a negative win. Here's how I think on this. I just say, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that back to the used car dealer and I'm going to trade up to a better exit. I want a better exit than that. I want at least to be here so that I could be no lose plus dinner for two. So at a minimum, I could decide to trade up to here. Like I could trade up to a break even, but if you're going to break even, make a little money. I could trade up so I'm just below the Bollinger Band mean and I've locked in maybe 0.5 and still giving it that much room. That doesn't seem stupid. So I could be at one or two. I could just take that and lock in one R. In the, in the uh, text box, where would you put your stop? At the two bar low? At the spine of the dragon? At the Bollinger Band mean? Or take it. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I'd like to have 3.5. Okay, 3.5 or 4. As long as you're not less than 1, and what you got to just decide is, I'm going to trade up from the Uwe exit to the profit preservation rule. Don't sell half. Either take it all, because if you start selling half, then that means on the runaway moves, you're going to have your smallest position size. Well, I'll just re-enter. Well, if you're going to re-enter, then you don't need to protect anything yet. But you could do that. But that guarantees that you're going to be small on the biggest moves. That means that if this thing failed, your biggest loss is occurring when you have your largest position size on, and your biggest favorable move, you have your smallest position size on. That's the opposite of what we want to do. In fact, if anything, I'd put my stop at the Bollinger Band mean and add a second position immediately. Because that's a trivial loss, and the first position will pay for it. And then if it does follow through, you've got a big win on a double scoop. Now, is that premature? Yeah, because that's not waiting for the 2R battle drill. The 2R battle drill says, wait till this thing has 2R in hand, and it is very clearly left all of this behind and then if it does give you a slight pullback you still make money 
Whereas if I put the second position on now and I put my stop here, then if I get out here, this loss negates that win. And I took what once was a 1.5 win and I made it a scratch trade. That would irritate me. So that's the logic behind the 2R battle drill. Wait before you put it on. All right, now here is where if I'm following the UA exit strategy, I get one, two, three. That means on the fourth dot, I run that up to here, and then I could start just deciding to follow the PSAR. So this was enough of a move to pull the PSAR dots all the way through the noise and into positive territory. So that is the justification for just, just waiting and seeing. Yeah, in this case, if you just use the PSAR all the way through, you get the same effect. But sometimes you get, you might get a move like this, and then it recovers, and then this would get you out, and then you'd miss that move. So when you have a tight wrist box like this, and it's only 0.2 of a position size, Uwe just says, leave it alone until I get three dots in my favor, then take action to preserve. That's all. That's all we're trying to do. Another option is, hey, just follow the PSAR. Another one is to go from the high and hang, hang your wrist box off the high, but that would have gotten, let's see, where does it get you out? It gets you out right here. And you'd get half an R, or maybe if three quarters of an R. Um, but then you'd have to wait for this little signal for your Kata 2 reentry, so you end up giving back that much. Not an exact science. So now I'm right here with my Uwe exit, and I'm holding this. Now where could you, so your, your stop should be not lower than that, but you could be here, you could be there, um, and it closed right here, you could just take that. So give me one, two, or three. If you were really slick and this rolled over and you wanted a one bar low, you might have been able to exit there. I'll, I'll give you credit for that one if you take that. Because that's actually preserving about 1.5. Nothing wrong with that. And the PSAR, or, you know, the UA exit gets you out with just a little bit more than one R. Uh, here's another WMB3 later in the day. This thing's still in play. I like it because it's conceptually a Kata 2. Another cut of two. So here's the oversold. So I read up and I'm waiting to see an uptick. I don't get an uptick until here. Then I can run that up to this bar. And I can put my entry above that. I never get the entry. And then it starts selling off again. Awesome. Until I get. And so what I can do now is just keep putting the the five cents above or two cents above, whatever the breakout above the candle. And then I finally get that and, and it's been upticking the whole way. So now I finally get this entry and I would just take the same wrist box I had over here, cut, paste here. This is where you get the RLXD entry on the Kata 2. So this one, the WMB3 front runs the Kata 2 entry by about a bar you would probably still have the same wrist box. You know, you wouldn't be wrong if you said, hey, I'm just going to run the wrist box all the way back to here. Same difference. My target would be up here at the peak. Oops. Now, 
Now you start telling me where your there's your piece are flip. Where's your stop? Is it here? Is it here? Yes. When you get that move across the Bollinger Band main and you're about plus 1R, in fact, that's the lowest it should be. You could even argue it could be Spine of the Dragon and lock in a little wedge. No lose plus dinner for two. And then use the bottom of the dragon as your trailing stop. You could do that. Now you've got the um, one, two, three dots above the entry. Just one of the things that we noticed is that by the time this happens, then the first move that got you in, if there's ever kind of like a sell, sell back, this is about the time that it makes a decision. Is it just going to fail or is there another leg? In this case, there was another leg. And that makes a emerging dragon here. So now by this point, my stop is at least here. And you could say bottom skin of the dragon, spine, peak of the upper dragon skin, or even one bar low. So one, two, three, four, five. Five reasonable places that you could put your exit. And this is why we say you should spend all your time working on thinking about how you want to manage your exit in a way that is satisfying to you and your personality so that you can have resilience, so that you want to make this a battle drill for yourself so that you have some satisfying rule set for how you want to do it so that you don't second guess yourself and it doesn't cost you mental energy to make a routine decision. This should be the most routine decision that you ever make, that you move it, you set it, forget it, and leave it alone and do something, do something else. Any one of those is justifiable. I like four. I like the skin of the dragon because I like holding on to an R. And this thing has a chance to really go. If it really goes, then that's plenty close, and I'll just start chunking that thing up like that and locking in pieces until it runs out. So uh, I'd have got, I'd have end up getting out. Um, where is it? Um, like right there. But you could justify this. That's still keeping plus one. And then if you got out here, you'd have to say, is that enough to get, is that really a kata two? I don't know, it's 115. You have enough time. Um, where I ended up at the time of this one, I had a meeting I had to go to, so uh, I was done. Where I just took the one, two, and the failure to follow through. I was just using the PSAR dot. And that's that returned about 2R. So, sniper trade of the day. Some things to think about. That's that's part of the bar by bar trading workshop approach. There's hundreds of case studies in that course available if you find this kind of thought process, framing and reframing and working through exits and entries and reversals to be useful. You can work through those uh, extensively multiple times at your speed. Um, let's see. I guess we want to go to 
the traders. Uh, Brian in the Kiwi, another 1R, he's up to 0.37R now, 27.5R in 62 trades, looking good, standard work, doesn't even take the Kata 2 and the reversal because of time of day. Um, Hamad, this um, in here is again you got the the Bollinger bands pinching I think those two at least are chops this is you're in a Z3 pinch by this point because this is the size of your box that's a Z3 pinch so that trick that trade is tradable I think these three should not have been taken and that's minus five minus point four minus 0.4 that's minus 1.3 in the chop now let me just show you something I just got done talking about the noise box L look at, at this trade here if that is the signal if you're using a Z3 line to say you know what this thing has to break out of my Z3 line for that to be a failure of this hypothesis That entry doesn't exit until up in here. That trade works with this as your risk box. And instead of taking 1.3 on three losing trades, your risk box must be related to the hypothesis that you're using. This one is so, t if you, you, you're executing here, that is, you know, like 0.2 or 0.3 of this whole big box. Maybe it's 0.4. It looks like 0.3. That's, that's all, that's noise. Uh, this was worth a shot. Good quick cut. Um, then that as a re-entry is brilliant. Then this, this you had two bars outside of the Z3, and we gave we uh, I I almost think. You know we gave back. Quite a large amount after an extreme upward move. But I still like that. I mean I, I like that trade. Now when this rolls over crosses the dragon, the spine of the dragon, leaves the dragon. Um, boy, I'm really feeling this short right in here. But I can live with this short. Leg one, leg two. Uh, I think you got to get out in here when it crosses the, or in here. I think this is too late. Because that thing could have kept going. Um, and this turned a pretty promising move in terms of what we gave back. We gave back more than half. I mean, we kept this much, but we gave back that much. So it feels to me we're not respecting the win. When this rolls over, P1, take the dragon. And then that gives you the extra move. What you got to do in that idea, uh, Hamad, is you got to wait for the R10 to reverse. Then you can take the skin of the dragon. Like this move in here doesn't get you out because the R10 hasn't moved yet. It hasn't moved up yet. So this is still noise. But after it reverses, now the skin of the dragon takes effect. And then this entry, that exit could be an entry, and that could be an entry here. 
and this still makes money, but you, you squeeze a little bit more out of it. Pretty much noise, and you didn't get burned, but... Um, This is a double bottom right here. That is supposed to collapse. When it doesn't, <clears throat> that's a fake one go to. I think you should be entering here or, or here on the PSAR flip and not here. Because you're, you, what you're doing is you're front running the VWAP by entering here. But I take the look at it, it was a double bottom it did not fail you're well into the spring you're darn near in the summer uh, maybe i try that uh, i love the exit i want you short here instead of here then that makes this a scratch instead of losing point two that's a good next entry great exit could have re-entered they're just this was just Nothing working, you might say, yep, that's just the chop. There just wasn't much available, and we actually netted out pretty well. So that's, uh, there's really nothing wrong with the way you were working out. Uh, Rivian. Oh, boy. Um, the gap up was somewhere up in here. You can't see it because you have, you don't have the, uh, instead of the open high low close, you have the high low close. The gap was up here. Wrist box. We could be short here on the OR3 and get paid already. Then when this rolls over and then fails the second time and crosses the PSAR, I want to be short on that so badly. And there's my execution exit right there. And now I can pound the crap out of this. And this is where the R10 reverses higher. So I can get out in here and I can go long here. So I can get one, two, almost three R on that one. This is pretty good. I like the second position. But as soon as that does not fail, you got to get out right there. And then that's your reversal. Uh, Joe, uh, dude, I love the 4R gain, but I'm going to say uh, we, I'm not sure if you bought this here, watched it go all the way up and then all the way down for minus one. If so, don't do that. Scratch it. And this is where after a gap up and a run up and then a big collapse, there's your collapsing dragon. Summer turned to fall. That is so short. It, look how far it fell from the high of the day. It moved one, two, three wrist boxes. That's probably a full frog box. And in Tesla, That's a $2.25 move. That's two times the R10, at least. That is a screaming short. And then that's an appropriate wrist box. And then the R10 doesn't even reverse to here, so you could reasonably get out here. But even if you get out there, that gives you a one, two, three. So the four should be seven. And then this... That's nice. That's nice. Um, reasonable here. And just keep firing. There's another one, two, three. This, this four could have been ten. We got to learn this. It's not, not too much. You cannot have too much volatility at the open. Day traders need the big V. We need the volatility. You want the volatility. Learn to handle it. Um, 
so let me come over here and look. Do I see? No. Here's here's what's missing on this. Too much V. Uh uh. Get V. Handle it. Be prepared for opening volatility and then handle it and then trade it. Action. Opportunity missed, we want to exploit. Let's see what Mark's thinking over here. Uh, net for the day, two and a half. This color coding scheme really makes it easy to see what's going on. I think um, on this one is the first thing that I notice. That's your second position, and you let that fall all the way back here, and that turned a 2R win into net minus yeah and now I notice that you notice that okay uh, this one is supposed to fail right away when it does there's a one two three and piece or flip exit that's where it should exit there not here and then this entry should be here that should be a stop and reverse battle drill fake one go three Um, this is in the summer and the fall, and you're trying to get short here. And when it doesn't get short, you waited for it to take a full R loss. No. It's supposed, as soon as it breaks through the dragon, it didn't fail. So stop here and get long here. And you save an, an extra R. Uh, that's a great cut of two. It's a horrible exit. Also horrible. Now, look at You got a high. If you didn't have this position on, right, you, you would say, look, here's three legs up. Great upward move. But now I got a high, a low. Oh, crap. I got a lower high. That means this is a collapsing dragon. That means this is a kata two. That means if I'm trying this kata two, and then I notice that this rolls over and it can't even get to the previous high, then I'm out here on the kata two signal the other way. Then I can actually be short here. Now, it doesn't pay off, but you don't know that because if this does pay off, it could come back to here or at least here. So you got to disassociate yourself from the trade that you're in and start evaluating the turning points. When this is going, what you're looking for is price to get above here and then the RL10 to get above there. And when it doesn't, this failure to follow through is telling you that's coming. Uh, reasonable uh, exit. This is a reasonable try. Reasonable exit at the bottom of that. That's perfect. But when this does not fail, one, two, three, I could be long here with the stop in the same location and I could actually get paid probably an R. I get paid more than what you lost there. reasonable uh, 
waiting too long. This is supposed to fail right away when it doesn't. I, I could be out of this. I mean, this went up, came back. Now, right here, look at this. Here. If we're going to trade on this. Now, this is supposed to fail. It did not. You get a one, two, three to the upside. It gets to the Bollinger Band mean and then fails. But this time, it doesn't even fail as low as the previous failure. Like this is where it failed to last time. This time it only fails here and starts to reverse. So I already have, it's feeling like this. That means I can get out in here or here. I don't have to wait for that. And I can actually be long here. And then I get paid on that little excursion to the upside. And then it starts failing. I'll get paid in here. It looks like noise, but that's just because you're using this much space on your chart for the active work, and you got all of this crap over here that's not helping you. So you're trying to make decisions in 3% of your lens. You don't need any of this. Zoom in and expand that so you can see what's going on. Same thing. Here's a, this failure to fail, there's a re-entry, Kata 2, right there. And then that one actually paid off. Emerging Dragon Long with a wrist box here. Um, this one is supposed to go. It doesn't. It came back to the skin of the dragon. The dragon rolled over. It leaves the dragon, and then we get out here for a full one-hour loss. That is a screaming short PSAR flip. Failure to follow through and then a reversal. If you hadn't taken the long, you would love to get short there because you don't have a bias to the long side. You would naturally get short there with that as your wrist box. And the PSAR works all the way to here. And then a collapsing dragon again. And then another one all the way to here. And then we gave back. Look how much we gave back. Well, that's on one position. If we'd have got a second position in, that's given back way too much. On one position, that's okay. I like the discipline. Good exit. That was better. Now we have a Kata 2. We shouldn't lose money on that. Still, we got paid pretty well. But there's some improvements inside here. Uh, so this is Brazil. Why do we love Brazil? For reasons provided before. It's beauty. And CD, perfect. Um, maybe premature on that. I, I don't mind that. Take it. Um, then you. this is instant stop and reverse, which you pretty much did. Covered. It never even broke through, so then we piled on second position, great exit. Caught a two. Now the whole thing, now the dragon has rolled over. This is like a caught a two and an owl, and you can participate in some of that. That's pretty good shooting, Tex. So short, on a collapsing dragon, short. Covered here, where's my re-entry on this? I, I thought, oh, 
he stopped and reversed and he got this whole move and then exited where he's supposed to no you got short after this move we got short and then you let it come all the way back to here don't do don't do that If I'm short here, and it doesn't, from the moment you get short, it didn't even do this or that or this, but instead starts doing this, bingo, RLXD. That's where, if I didn't have that short and I saw this, that's where my Kata 2 entry is. So if the short doesn't work, don't let it go further north than a Kata 2 entry. Take the Kata 2 entry. You know, exit this short and stop, or if you wait for this, that's fine. And both of those are better than this entry. And then even if you take this entry, which is, you know, well into the emerging dragon, and you got those two little dragon horns, and then we let that go negative? Ouch. You had to be feeling pretty good right here, and we let that whole trade go negative. Very hard for your psychology to survive that over the long run. I love this collapsing dragon right here. This is off of the... I love that. And now what I especially like is the fact that you don't get out in the noise... This is protecting you, and now the move happens. It starts to work. I love the second entry, and then it reverses sharply. Get out. And then that may be, may be a bad fill. So there's, there's some improvements in here and in here that we can work on. This one just hurts my feelings because I want you to do well. Up, down, up. So I love the entry. I love the wrist box. It's a bit, maybe it's a bit wide. Maybe I could live with a wrist box there, but that's fine. Um, I love the exit. Now here's the PSAR break. Now I want you to start feeling all of the road signs that are telling you that this could happen. Failure to follow through. R10 rolls over, enters the dragon, crosses the dragon, crosses the VWAP. VWAP sloping down. PSAR sloping down. Bollinger Band Mean crossed. Collapsing dragon triggered. Rejects that the Bollinger Band Mean comes back. Collapsing dragon can't even get to the VWAP or the Bollinger Band Mean, fails again. PSAR flips, collapsing dragon, collapsing dragon, collapsing dragon, runaway freight train to the downside that moved from 32.35 to 31.75. 60 cent move, that's 2%, and that is on EWZ, that's, um, what's the uh, R10 on EWZ? That's probably five risk buys, that's half a range stat move, and uh, in the trades we are taking, are when it's already back and now in the chop. And we're taking those and getting ground up. Whereas the move is this. And then the reversal move is this. After that abnormal five times an R10 move, half a range stat, I get a Kata 2. I get another Kata 2. This entry could be here rather than here. That's a good exit on that. But... I should be getting paid in here, and I should be getting paid in here. 
that is a the harshest winter you know buy one of those little stair stepper treadmills for under your desk get a get a treadmill with a frame for your desk and put your trading screen on there and then walk while you're trading and walk at 60% of your target heart rate same thing massive sell off all these opportunities and then we trade in the chop uh, now this one to be fair is on 30 minutes so uh, fair enough I'm not dogging you on that reasonable um, risk management I'd like to see that one short. You wouldn't lose money on it. Um, there just wasn't much in that one. So no real rooms for much improvement. Uh, missing the big move. Trading in the chop. We stayed out of this chop, but these downside Kata 2s are all working. But we did get one finally over here, and that's that's pretty nice. I like the discipline to not let that go negative. See previous discussion of the rollover and the collapse and the reversal. And when the, when the S&P is doing this, the things that you had prepared for the short side trade are available because the market is stepping on them. And then these Kata 2s, all the things that are correlated with the markets, are doing shorts and longs and being supported by the market move. So when you have the S&P on your radar, you got to remember that the S&P is contributing 50% of the gains and losses of sectors that are correlated to it and, and companies or targets. Only 25% of the move is coming from the target itself. The market and the sector are contributing. So when you see these things, you should be using that as your directional bias for the kinds of targets that you want to trade on. Don't just isolate on the target. Look at the context of the market and sector. Like, we'd have gotten this one if we'd have been doing that. Yep, that's a cut of too long. This is a collapsing dragon short from here. That's that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good exit. That's also a stop and reverse on an SSC that gets paid. Then your short could be here because it's crossing the VWAP and not later than crossing the Bollinger Band mean. I think we should be short inside this rather than here, and we should be short here. And see my previous discussion about the gym. Um, So I want to see I want to see what your accountability strategy is. How are you going to do this so that it is easy to so that it's easier to set the goals than not set them. And I think if you had a standard set of goals that you could is this really going to vary every day? No. Have a list of standard daily goals that you want to adhere to. And then that becomes how you build a habit. The young fella. Um, let's see here. Here's the opening of the day. Opens here. PSR flips here wrist box there that's the size of your wrist box there's a cot of two here so that's an entry that's a cot of two entry or a second entry this is a short back to the Bollinger Band mean that's a great entry great second position wonderful exit for 9.6 R but we could have had 15 So let me see where that is on your 
after action review and your goals for accountability for tomorrow. All right, Dan. Um, collapsing dragon entry, close the turbo for 0.9. Perfect. Um, good entry, the turbo exit closes. Quick cover, that could be a stop and reverse right there. Um, let's see, caught a two entry here. Did we really do this? And then, no, I don't think so. I think that's where you got in. I think. This was just note to self, I believe. So caught a two, then quick exit for point one. That's fine. Um, if that's in the last hour, then maybe you were front running that for tomorrow. If you were, I wonder why. Um, I wouldn't. You don't have money in hand. And whoops. And this is. Um, and that's MSOS. I, no way. That thing gaps. So look at the gaps on that thing and 50 50 chance of getting smashed on that no way um yeah i mean i'd like to be on this one here harsh and then a wrist box off the bottom one a one two three entry you like half a position so take half a position one two three then the other one here and then I like that exit. Um, <clears throat> the ones late in the day, it, you got to answer time, will, pattern, and money. You got to have at least two hours for that move to work before you, uh, otherwise, you can't take it on 30 minute bars. If there was a 90 minutes or an hour left, you might be able to take a three minute one, but. Only on an extreme, like a VWAP magnet would I take that. I don't like trading in the last hour. But two hours, yeah, I could take it. I think. See previous discussion about two-hour battle drill. And um, uh, time will pattern in money. Uh, in terms of the 150, um, we're holding at the top of the 30-day high and the 10-day high. Uh, we're getting rising lows and very small daily volatility, but it hasn't broken out really strongly, but it's still digesting this move. So this is still very, very vulnerable. But the, And it, it could very well explode to the high side, but that's why I'm not putting... Um, a lot of overnight positions on, and the ones I do, about half of them are long and half are short, so maybe market neutral in that sense. Still compound critical state. The only thing I like is higher lows and lack of volatility is promising to the upside, and the dragon has turned, the 30 has turned, now the river has turned, and we're pushing the 30-day high, and it hasn't failed in four days. So there's a potential upside. Bullish normal, strength across all the NDXs, volatility is favorable. What's not to love? Uh, buyer's market for the auto framer. Um, dominated by the summer and spring. This is pretty good news. I just like the ones that are in the green. That's showing where the residual strength is. The S&P and old school tech, that's still the way to play it. Um, trade value, uh, I like Tesla, NVIDIA, Microsoft in here, Oracle. All right, that's everything for today. You know, we're trying hard for this to become that next leg up in the bull after some serious...
pain and suffering. That was an amazing 10-day period, and it hasn't failed. But it, is, it does have to, it has to survive a couple more days. All right, guys, good work today. Longer session than normal. Uh, think about that bar by bar course. It's uh, fairly priced at four ninety seven. Normally a thousand. Coaching people in that one was where I think I really refined my craft on the hybrid thirty minute. To be honest, because it just burns those patterns into your retinas um, all the time and it, it creates a habit of mind of how to dynamically frame all the time with visual indicators it's really pretty amazing all right that's everything we got for today